Hej alle sammen, og velkommen til en ny presentation av søndagens tekst fra NMS. I dag er den ved Dr. Olivier Rangianzaka på det teologiske fakultetet i Fjena Ransoa. Og da skjønner dere at samtalen og presentation vil foregå på engelsk, men det skal gå bra for alle, håper vi. Før vi gir ordet til Olivier, så skal vi be sammen. La oss be. Kjære Herre, takker deg for denne muligheten vi har til å enda en gang dykke inn i ditt ord. Lytte til det, både presentert og forklart, og samtale om det. La oss trenge dypere inn i hva du vil si oss denne dagen, og med disse ordene fra deg. Send din hellige ånd til oss, og vær med Olivier når han presenterer og legger ut teksten for oss. Vi ber i Jesu navn. Amen. So I would like to give the word to Dr. Olivier from Fiona Ranzu, Madagascar, to present for us John 21, verses 15 to 19, which is um, the text to be preached on the second Sunday of the Easter time. Thank you. The word is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I will read first the text uh, from the NRSV uh, version, New Revised Standard Version, in Jesus' name. They have finished breakfast. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, And my sheep. He said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and uh, someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Amen. This passage is all about restoration and love. Jesus confirms that even though Peter failed several times, he still loves him and wants to confirm that love to him. Jesus also wants Peter to confirm his love of Jesus. After all these denials and failings, does Peter still love Jesus? Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. Number three is important in the story. Jesus asked Peter three times if he truly loved him, and he called him Simon, son of John, three times too. Jesus also talked three times about Peter's mission, which was to take care of the lambs, the sheep, the lambs, the sheep, and the sheep again. Number three, and, and the name Simon of John, Simon, son of John, are special to Peter's life. Peter is like us, sometimes excited and representing other followers of Jesus. But he also gets nervous and falls down very easily. This happens first in Luke. 22 verses. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once repent, strengthen your brothers. The Lord prayed not to keep Peter from failing. In suffering is a puzzle to fall. Jesus comes out most 
that fall was necessary in order to reveal Peter the condition of his heart, to show him the worthlessness of self-confidence and to humble his, his proud spirit. But here in, in John uh, chapter 21, verse 9, we found out that the first thing the apostle saw when he met Jesus on the shore was a fire of this phrase is only mentioned again in John, John 18, verse 18. There it talks about a fire of coals in, in, in a unique place in the priest palace where Peter was warming himself with Christ's enemies when he denied knowing Jesus three times. Seeing by the sea of Tiberias would remind Peter of his denial, making him feel again guilty. Even though Jesus di did not mention it, the fire was a powerful reminder to Peter. After eating the food Jesus provided, it showed that Jesus still cared for Peter. Jesus still loved then Jesus spoke to Peter by the fire, aiming to make him reflect on his actions, as fire often represents judgment. When Jesus, Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? He wasn't just seeking a yes or no answer. He was digging deep into Peter's heart. This wasn't what making Peter feel helping him see his own weaknesses and shortcomings. Despite Peter's mistakes in the past, his honest answers shows that he truly loved Jesus. It reminds us that even when we mess up, our love for Jesus can still shine through if we let his grace come work. In this passage, uh, there are two Greek verbs uh, for love, namely filio and agapao. Uh, the verb filio refers to a love that is based on affection, fondness, or friendship. It uh, refers to worms and closeness between two people. It is often used to describe love between friends or family members, as well as feelings of loyalty or attachment. Filio implies a mutual relationship where affection is shared between parties. On the other hand, the Greek verb agapao denotes a higher form of love, described as selfless, sacrificial, and unconditional love. It is a love that is characterized by a deep commitment to the well-being and welfare of others, regardless of personal gain or benefit. Agapao is often associated with God's love for humanity, and the love that Christians are called to show towards one another. It transcends feelings or emotions and is rooted in a deliberate choice to act in the best interest of others. In the passage where Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He uses the verb agapao in his uh, first two questions. However, Peter responded with you in his replies. This exchange highlights a significant aspect of the conversation. Jesus is inquiring about Peter's depths of commitment and willingness to sacrificially love him, using the term agapao. Peter, on the other hand, responds with a verb that reflects a genuine 
affection or friendship love the verb fideo this difference highlights peter's current state of devotion and spirituality and highlights the journey of growth and transformation that he's undergoing under Christ's guidance. Then Jesus gave Peter a very important mission. Every time Peter said, Jesus gave him an important to. The first one is to take care of the lambs. And the second is to tend to the sheep. Taking care of lambs and sheep is not just about feeding them. It is about looking after them and keeping them safe. Jesus was not just restoring uh, Peter's position as a leader. He was asking him to serve others with love and compassion. By giving Peter this responsibility, uh, Jesus so showed that our calling comes from him, not from our own perfection. Then uh, Jesus entrusted Peter with the task of feeding his lambs and shepherding his sheep. This task symbolized uh, different aspects of pastoral care and believers. Feeding the lamb represents the nurturing and care of new or young believers in the faith. Lambs are often seen as vulnerable and in need of guidance and sustenance. In, in a spiritual sense, feeding the lambs involves providing them with spiritual teaching them with funds of faith and helping them grow in their relationship with God. It is about offering support, encouragement, and mentorship to those who are new to the faith or in need of spiritual guidance. Shepherding the sheep, on the other hand, encompasses the broader responsibility of overseeing and guiding the entire flock of believers. Sheep are seen as, as more mature and established in their faith. Shepherding involves leading, protecting, and caring for the spiritual well-being of the, of, of the church as a whole. It includes providing pastoral leadership, offering guidance in, in times of difficulty and ensuring that the flock remains united and focused on following Christ. And then the, sec the next piece, Jesus told Peter that he would die for his faith. It was a scary thing to hear, but it also showed that God was in control of Peter's life. Even though Peter was difficult, his loyalty would bring glory to God. It is a reminder that even when things get tough, God is with us, and our faithfulness to him matters a lot. What is the big idea in this text, in this passage? I think the most important thing here is God's grace and our responsibility. God's love and grace and our responsibility and our mission. Throughout this story, we see a balance between God's grace and our responsibility. Even though Peter messed up, Jesus forgave him and gave him an important mission to do. But that grace is not an excuse to be lazy. It is a reason to work even harder, to serve God and others. God's grace gives us the strength to do what he asks us, uh, ask us to do. The second big point is the church. The church is a community of broken, 
problem. It is where people who have experienced failure come together to lean and rely on the love and grace of Jesus. Jesus is aware of our weaknesses and failures. He knows every detail of our sins. While we often stumble and fall short, Jesus remains faithful. His unwavering love is always there to embrace those who feel they have failed and need, need his grace. It is important to remember that the mission of tending to God's lambs and sheep is not a condition for our forgiveness and salvation. It is not something that God asks us to do before he, he will forgive us our sins, but rather is a loving response. It is a response from a grateful heart that have received forgiveness and salvation because we have got forgiveness. We are called to guide others toward that same forgiveness and restoration through our caring and shepherding. Amen. Very much, uh, Olivier, for your uh, very profound and clear uh, presentation of this of this text. Um, so, when I now want to speak, it's not to add; rather, it is just to say thank you very much for all the highlights that you brought us from this. Uh, I feel that we had already many things that we can. Uh, think about in the continuation uh, and teaching about this part of scripture as well. One of the, I, I must say, I, I was very happy because this is one of my favorite uh, biblical texts, perhaps. I don't know if it's good to have a favorite biblical text because it's like you say, the others are not as good, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, what really affects me, I think, is that it's a significant thing that this uh, story comes just after the resurrection. Mm. It's just after Easter. Uh, and that means that Jesus, who is now uh, restoring Peter and taking him, so to say, back into his... That is not any... It's not, a, it's not just anybody. It is the, the, the dead, the crucified, and the risen Jesus Christ who is now talking to Peter. Um, and I think that is significant because in a way, this story with Peter serves to summarize the wonderful consequences for each and every one of us that Easter brings about, that J Jesus' death and resurrection brings about. And I think it's, it's just like you said, the church is a community of the broken. It is not a community of those who manage to fix everything on their own before entering church and joining church. And I think this story highlights that and underscores it in the most profound way. Uh, I mean, it's really terrible what Peter did. Um, but even so, uh, Christ's love for him is far bigger than his mistake. Uh, and it is also very much God. Bring back Peter to his first first love or his first calling. So thank you for helping us see that very clearly. Sten Vegar, would you like to uh, to share your reflections? With well, first of all, a big thank you to Olivia. Uh, I think it was so encouraging just to to listen to. For you for taking us through every <clears throat> passage of the text. Um, I think I've heard uh, that um, the time after the resurrection sometime, uh, sometimes have been referred to as uh, the the first day of the, the the eighth day or the first day in the new creation. Is that a, a term that's familiar to you? But I think, yeah, Christopher, you, you kind of brought that uh, to the table here when you talk about the, the, the grace of 
Jesus kind of because Peter was a, a really at the ground zero in his life and uh, kind of have had uh, abandoned his faith and everything in a way because he just he he didn't yeah he had his big confession uh, earlier on when everyone left him John six and so forth and. But at a certain at, at uh, a certain time, he just abandons everything and and kind of gives up hope and faith and everything. <clears throat> and and uh, and then the new morning arises when 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 Jesus is the new the, the new creation is a, has become a reality in a way, uh, and. Uh, uh, and he reinstates uh, Peter into into the, his kingdom and into his ministry and into being a follower and a server of Jesus. And uh, there is a, like a reference to uh, to the parable in John ten, maybe, where where Jesus talks about uh, the hirelings, the hired hands, uh, the people that. Uh, they will leave the lambs when the when the wolf comes because they they don't have a real passion a real heart for the flock uh, and I think that's an interesting background for what uh, Jesus is kind of bringing Peter into now because it's something quite different from that from being a hired hand being one that is actually gonna die for for his, uh, yeah, in his service and in his ministry and for being a follower of Christ. So, mm. but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yes, you are right. Uh, this, the, uh, Jesus uses the metaphor of uh, Sheep herding here, and 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 they just know very well how hard it is to tend the sheep. They have to bring the flock into the mountains. They have to find a good pasture for the sheep. Uh, they have to protect the sheep from danger, from uh, uh, wild animals in the forest. And 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 here, uh, when Peter said that he loved Jesus, Jesus uh, immediately said. Peter, if you're going to tend my sheep, and remember that would be a hard, hard job for you. And at 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 the end of your life, you will die a, a, a very a, a very tough death. Because according to the tradition, Peter was uh, dead, crucified on the cross. Uh, but he, he uh, he asked those to crucify to put his his head not like Jesus positions. So uh, here it uh, you are right that uh, Jesus gave him a very hard job, a very tough job to tend his sheep, and 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 that job will will uh, will take his own life at the end of his story because he will die. Uh, because of his love of Jesus. Because of his love for him, now Peter will die for his love for Jesus. Uh, this very important uh, thing in this text. Love and death. Jesus loves us and he dies on the cross. And now, Peter, if, if, if you love me, you will also die for me. Yes, I've, I was happy to have the, to hear this um, last point again because you said it in your presentation earlier, Olivier. But um, uh, what I hear from it is many things, but amongst others, this. Uh, the love for Christ is not something only relevant or applicable to the person, the one person. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like Peter's and 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 Jesus are having a private conversation 
revolving around evolves around the two of them and how much they love one another it's not sort of an internal uh, or limited scope yes. yeah. um, the whole scope and as you pointed out clearly it, it very quickly turns and says well you love me good now look to other people look after them so yeah. the love of for christ the love from christ inevitably turns our attention or at least should turn our attention from ourselves and our own failures or our own successes for that matter yeah. and turn it to other people whom Christ also loves mm. but who might not yet know him and who have not yet discovered the full um, recompense or the full fruit mm. of Easter of Jesus' death and resurrection. Yes. Uh, so of course it is about the church but it is also I think about those who are not yet church, yeah, church. Uh, yes. but should be allowed to become church uh, and to get to know Jesus um, and to have their lives resurrected mm. I'd say uh, just like mm. Peter had mm. um, and it's also good uh, I think what we just talked about that um, uh, the, the, the task uh, that awaits Peter I think it goes far beyond what he ever imagined uh, mm. would be his life path. Uh, and maybe he does not understand. Mm. But what Jesus does, I think, is that through this reinstatement and through this rehabilitation of their relationship, Jesus puts a firm rock under Peter's feet. Yes. So that he doesn't longer he doesn't need to crawl by his hands. Mm and shout loudly about how much he's willing to sacrifice for for Christ mm. or how much he's willing to do mm. but Jesus puts him mm. which mm. is what Jesus himself uh, like you also pointed out earlier Olivier it's not like we can save ourselves by what we do that doesn't mm. come first but what mm. Jesus has done comes first and that is also terribly clear uh, in this text and through your presentation and I think that's applicable and a good reminder for every one of us, mm. whether we are or are not in professional Christian ministry, because we tend to be very aware of our failures and failures, and we often <clears throat> regard our success or the success of God's kingdom by what we do and don't. Um, but Jesus is now reminding us very clearly about what is the real foundation for the church, namely his own death and resurrection. Um, and there's nothing else that can really be the foundational rock for the church. So that is also good to, to be reminded of. Mm. Now, our time is running. Uh, this is a wonderful thing to talk about, so I would love to go on uh, forever. Uh, but mm. I would just give uh, both Stenvega and Olivier a last chance to comment things. Maybe Stenvega first, and then Olivier, if you would uh, round things off afterwards. I think that would be an, a fine way to do it, if there's anything mm. else you'd like to add. Oh, not not much really, but uh, I think it is. It's a it's a like a very surprising and wonderful turn for Peter and uh, <laughs> to meet Jesus there when his hope was had died in a way, and and then just kind of I, of course it was it must have been challenging to to be confronted with this uh, deep deep question three times but but it's a process of healing and reinstatement and and it's a it's a way of jesus displays uh, in a way what his grace is all about and uh, yeah it's a wonderful way that john ends his uh, gospel and uh, kind of passes it on to the world Oh, yes, uh, this is, as I said in the presentation, all, all about uh, God's grace, God's love, and God's confirmation. This is a time for us to confirm that we love him. Uh, and, and, uh, and if we... ...love him, know about God's love and God's restoration... It, it, it is time for us to stand up and work and do what Jesus asked us to do. 
as a response to his love and, and to his forgiveness and salvation. If, if you feel like you are forgiven and you are loved, you feel loved, go out and, and, and tell people that Jesus also loves them and bring them to church, bring them to Christ. That is my final words from my, my friend. So thank you for in, inviting me for this uh, reflection of uh, this text today. God bless you. Yes, thank you, everybody. Uh, there it ends. Follow me. So uh, thank you, Olivier, for your presentation. And uh, also thank you, Sten Vega, for joining in conversation. And our team will be back in two weeks. Uh, and next week, uh, one of the other teams will present the Sunday sermon. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.